Meltdown on the Fight Network continues. Uh, thanks to Conor McGregor for taking a couple of minutes of his uh, media blitz to join us. Yesterday they were in Dublin and it was off the hook. Yeah, we got Conor. We did that interview at like 9 in the morning and he wasn't actually in the best of moods. And he actually was a little bit uh, friendlier to us than he was uh, to some others. But I tell you what, uh, Cody, he's doing a hell of a job uh, selling this uh, fight as we welcome in. Cody Saftik uh, from uh, the Fight Network, Bookie Beatdown, very, very popular podcast. It's uh, him and Paul Shaughnessy tearing apart and have uh, been picking winners. We've got a great card lined up uh, this week, and you can see this card on uh, the Fight Network. But before we jump into the fights, uh, Cody, it's your take on Conor McGregor and uh, the circus that... Uh, that uh, follows him everywhere. You made a great point. I mean, the fact that he got up at 9 in the morning, for a lot of people, it's like, I work 9 to 5. Getting up at 9 is that bad. He goes to bed at crazy hours. He wakes up at crazy hours. You're trying to get gym time in. Like, the life that he lives, crazy. But that's why he's got to make that money, right? Yeah, you know, one thing, one thing that he told us, actually, in this, though, is that uh, normally he trains in Dublin, yeah. and normally he goes to Iceland, and he hangs out with Gunner and uh, Gunner's old man. He's not doing that this time. He's going to be setting up camp exclusively in Las Vegas. And as you just mentioned, for a guy, for a guy that, um, that lives the lifestyle that he does, me personally, I think this is a horrible idea if you're Conor McGregor. You know, do what you've been doing, man. You know, in the past, I've heard him say he likes to go to Iceland because no one knows who he is. He can get away from everything. He can just concentrate the fresh air. He can concentrate on fighting. You're not doing that in Las Vegas, Nevada. He's going to spend months in Vegas before a fight in Vegas. I get the acclimation part to the desert, but I don't like him hanging around Vegas for eight weeks, uh, Cody. Well, I agree. And also his best training partners, they're obviously back in Ireland as well. So you never really change where you get your success. He's got like, I guess, Cathal Penders big, but even Patty Houlihan, those guys push him when he's back in Ireland. I, I noticed something on the Embedded series a couple fights ago. He was in Vegas. He was hanging with Tom Egan, who's actually the first ever Irish fighter to fight in the UFC. He got smoked by John Hathaway way back when. Never fought in the UFC <laughs> ever again. Is this the kind of guy you want training with you? Not saying he's a bad training partner by no means, but at the same time, you know, stick with where it got you here. And that's John Kavanaugh's team. So. I don't like the move either, but we'll see how it plays out. Who are you liking uh, right now? The uh, fight's still a long time away, so we're not going to hold you uh, to, to the selection. <laughs> you know, oh, this, is, this is who I'm taking. It's easy to get caught up in the Connor hype, and this is what happens with the embedded shows, with the UFC yeah. countdown shows. People watch. I mean, uh, a funny story is Phil Baroni you know, trains over at AKA, right? So he, he's trained everywhere. Uh, amongst but, other places. Yeah, amongst yeah. other places. <laughs> <laughs> amongst the streets in New York. He's trained... He's trained everywhere, but he's over at AKA. So he's there before Cain Velasquez is fighting Brock Lesnar. And uh, he tells me and Joey Odessa that, um, hey, you know what? You know, Cain's going to kill him, man. Cain's going to kill him. He's a monster in the gym. He's so ready for this. Phil Baroni watched the countdown show. Brock's like punching holes in walls and stuff. He calls Joey. He's like, I don't know, man. Uh, Brock looks pretty good. Even a fighter falls for this stuff. So every time Connor talks, the line keeps dropping, man. Aldo is like 200, Cody. It's like minus 140 at some spots right now. Well, it's all about the money coming in. If the money's coming in on people, oh, I like this Conor McGregor coming in from Ireland. They watch the embedded. They see him holding that title, and they think to themselves, oh, oh the Aldo wants no part in that. I think he does. He's the <laughs> champion. He's fought the best guys. And quite frankly, I'd be a little worried for Jose Aldo because, oh, maybe he gets taken down. I don't fear the takedown here, and therefore, tee off with those leg kicks. Kick him in the leg as many times. We'll see how well he moves when his leg's not exactly If anybody there. takes anybody down, Aldo might go for a few takedowns. Well, we've to seen it. it. He's yeah. had a decent wrestling game. Yeah, yeah, I think. But it's funny because McGregor, people, the critics of McGregor will say, oh, he didn't deserve, he doesn't deserve the fame. He doesn't deserve the, the catapult, you know, launch job to the, to the top that he's got because he hasn't faced a wrestler like a guy like a Frankie Edgar. But like Dana said, he hasn't had to. He's taken care of business. And now he sort of gets lucky and the champ is not a wrestler either. You know, stylistically, it's, it's going to be a really, really entertaining uh, fight. And uh, stylistically, we've got some uh, pretty entertaining fights this Saturday. If anything, Saturday afternoon action, oh, man. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Waking up to some, uh, some early morning combat. Let's start off at the top here with Chad Mendes and Ricardo Lamas. Speaking of Jose Aldo. <laughs> Two uh, guys who couldn't beat him. Yeah, Aldo's broken these guys. Yeah. Mendes has only lost to Aldo in his career. He's 16, beaten 16 days. He's looked good both times. And he, he lost twice uh, to Aldo. And some people would say, you know, the fence grab. Fence grab, yeah, yeah, The yeah, fence yeah. grab in the first fight might have changed things. But it's funny you mentioned Aldo getting pissed off. 
because we saw Aldo was pissed off at Mendez. Mendez did talk he smack. Him. That's right. And and Aldo was pretty aggressive and violent in that fight. What? To me, the line surprised me here, Cody, that I see Mendez minus 450 favorite. Minus 450, crazy as well. And I thought to myself, well, maybe uh, Ricardo Lamas, what, what's the, why would you beat Ricardo Lamas? Well, maybe you finish him. Not really known to get finished. He's got the one knockout loss to Uriel Contra yeah. way back when. Way back. He's not someone who gets finished. For minus 450, I can't justify that either. Uh, Chad Mendez is very talented. The, the toughest fight he's had in that little stretch of him knocking out people was when he fought Nick Lenz. And that was the first time I was like, well, you know what? Maybe a, a fellow wrestler can negate him a little bit. Ricardo Lamas is savvy. He's been around. He looked awful against. Jose Aldo didn't look good against Hawk but he hadn't Diaz. fought in it forever when exactly he Aldo, but yeah. he's got that kind of style that he can wear on you he can do what the same thing what scares me a little bit is the fact that it's five rounds is he going to be able to hang for five rounds I don't know but for minus 450 not touching this tough one. fight entertaining fight very entertaining yeah but it's, it's got to be law of pass really you're going to justify laying 450 maybe a parlay if you're a Mendez fan oh, yeah. are you really going to put 450 bucks on the table <laughs> to win 100 against Ricardo Lamas you're going to be biting your nails the whole time thinking why did I just do that here's That's an interesting fight here with uh, Ally and Quinta and uh, and Masvidal <laughs> what, what do you think of this number here I'm seeing I and Quinta plus 110 uh, this is a tough fight to pick here, man. Masvidal is one of these guys, he's, he sort of deserves bigger names than he's been getting. But this is another tough young guy for him. And Ian Quinta from the, uh, the Cerro Longo camp, he's sort of in his own right now, man. He's, he's looking great. And word out of that gym is what? that he's, he's got that it factor. Well, Ray Longo mentioned it a while back. He goes, these are one of the guys. He said the same thing with Weidman. He'll be a champ. With Aya Quinta, like, this is another super talented guy that sky's the limit for him. The one knock on him is the fact that his three losses, all by submission. Even in his fight before coming to the UFC, he lost to, I believe, Pat Ottawood by arm by submission. Yeah, yeah. Jorge Masvidal has only got two wins by submission, but he has a tremendous submission game. And we saw he actually beat Michael Chiesa, who's another guy with a Controlled him. Fantastic. Yeah. So actually, the lines here, if you want Jorge Masvidal by submission, actually quite good. But the fact is, is that this is so close both ways, you think, oh, dog or pass. But it's basically even anyways. Aya Quinta stand-up game, much better than, uh, than Chiesa's Very good. though, right? Yeah, Masvidal, however, it's like, can you knock this guy out? No, I mean, we no, see, man, We didn't see him bare-knuckle boxing yeah. back <laughs> Against 200 pound Kimbo Slice protege. 200 pounds, 240, 250 Huge. pounders. And here he shows He's up. He's making M stop. He's like, the other guy's yeah, like, all yeah. right, it's enough, it's enough, <laughs> I'm man. done. It's I'm enough. done. Enough for me. Yeah, no, Mazda, he can take it. He can take he, it. He's show. a badass. Like, yes. and, and, like, if we take people out of the cage, I like to set odds on that. All right, there's yeah, no cage, yeah. there's no rules. You meet this guy in a dark yeah, alley, what's going to happen? You know what I mean? Masvidal's top five he's rankings, good. man. He's like, good. I don't care he's about weight class. And, and for that reason, I see with Ally Quinta, he's very talented. But the way to beat a guy like that is you, you put the fire on him. You put the pressure and you wait until he melts. And with George Vazal, a little passive because he's very technical. He doesn't just brawl. But he's the kind of guy that, especially in later rounds, he can physically break you. Uh, speaking of uh, uh, Kiesa here, mine is a pretty big favorite against Mitch Clark. I, another fight. I don't really we want to be laying this number. I agree with you in that the minus 350 for Chiesa is a little off, but plus 140 for Chiesa inside the distance, I'm actually really feeling that. I like Mitch Clark, I really do. But he's another guy that can and will be broken. His big win's Ally Quinta, that's it. But if you look at Mitch Clark, he fought for the UFC once in 2011. He fought for the UFC once in 2012. He fought for the UFC once in 2013, once in 2014. This is going to be... He's got no momentum here. The fact is he's got that one win all ally Quinta, watched the yeah. first round of that fight, dominated in the first round of that yeah. fight. I think Kiesa does the same thing, breaks him in the second or third, finishes him, plus 140 inside the distance. I'm liking the Maverick here. What do you think uh, this is the, uh, the Venezuelan vixen returns, Oof. right? Speaking this is of, iffy. This is an iffy yeah, one. Speaking, especially she's coming back. And whatever happened to that? Remember she supposedly got beat up in the gym? Oh, I got beat up. They're roughing me up. They're jealous of me and all this type of stuff. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and here she is fighting for the first time. Well, she blew out the meniscus, the ACL, the MCL, the LCL, and they said two years she'd be off. And this is one year. So to me, it's like, are you rushing it, first of all? Massive knee surgery. Am I willing to put that kind of money on someone who's coming off a year layoff because of a knee surgery? Not so much. Dudier was actually coming off a win over her training partner in the last fight anyway, so maybe a little bit of bad blood here. But the fact is... You is want to be laying 275 here, no. Juliana Pena, we saw her on the Ultimate Fighter. She had the big win over Shayna Baszler, but Baszler didn't really turn yeah, yeah. Her, her. Both of her wins prior to signing with the UFC, sorry, both of her fights prior to getting in the UFC, both losses. Her only win in the UFC, Jessa Ricosi, who's 1-4 in, in MMA. I think this is another bit of hype. People like her. People know that she trained with Tate. People think she's pretty. People yeah. feel for her. She trains out of a pretty decent gym with uh, Sick Jitsu. I think it's more so the hype more than she's actually worth the minus 260. That yeah, we, we've seen with the women's game, and you know, somewhat with the men's game as well, 
Image is everything. Yes. Image and perception becomes reality. Paige Van Zandt. Yeah, she she <laughs> signing cards. She loses and she signs rebound deals. Right? I just don't know, man. No, that's that's the way that it works. And you know, we 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 see this. That people people want to support the hot chick fighter. Yes. They, they you know they're always cheering for the hotter the hotter one here. You know, pretty big price here. And in women's fights, they're generally pretty evenly matched for the most part. You don't want to be laying big numbers in this. And we saw in the in the women's championship. Uh, Sparza was favored. Yeah. She and should have been a 14-1 to 1 underdog if you look at what happened in the fight. But even in, in, in her fight to win the title against Rose Namajunas, Rose is the favorite. Yeah. So it's one of those cases where it's yeah, like you said, people are cheering hot? for Rose Because too, she's man. gorgeous. Yeah, and you're so thinking, oh, that. man, she's good looking. She's not all that banged up in the face. She probably doesn't get hit all that much. But she's a young girl. <laughs> There's a pattern there. <laughs> it <laughs> people are, a lot of people like to bet Roger Huerta back in the day because he's a good looking yeah. dude. I think it's the same thing. With women's fighting, you're right. It's almost like heavyweight fighting. It's dog or pass situation because the line doesn't yeah, really yeah. get it all that much. Exactly. And like, you know, with, with the exception. All right, so we've only got a couple of minutes here left to last through this. We got Clay Guida's laying minus 245. And a friend of ours and a guy that I'll be personally pulling for here, Gray Maynard. Gray Maynard returns, is an underdog. Let's be honest, man. Maynard was never the same after the Edgar Wars. And it just drained him so much. The dude, he was obsessed with Frankie Edgar. I think if he wins this fight, he's going to call Edgar out after the fact. <laughs> I want to fight Frankie Edgar I want uh, again. So we got to get out of here right now. What do you, what do you make of this one against uh, Yakolov? Three straight knockout losses. Obviously, if it comes down to, is he going to get hit? Is he going to get knocked out? Well, that's a possibility. But Yakovlev, not exactly a power puncher. And with Gray Maynard, you're right. The Frankie fights ruined him, but he also had a kid around that same time. And I think having the kid, having the responsibility, I think that really all weighed on him. Now, after three straight losses, he's got to know my job's on the line here. I need to provide for my family. I like the guy. I actually see Gray Maynard getting the win. Got to pull the trigger at plus 100 here. Plus all right. one, yeah. It's decent odds. I like it. All right. Great job, uh, Cody. Check out Cody and uh, Shaughnessy on the bookie beatdown, fightnetwork.com. We'll wrap it up uh, right now with our videos uh, of the week. And we've shown you a lot of post-fight brawls uh, before. This is from Pro FC. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Gets Pro, out of hand here. Yeah, Pro FC. This, this is arguably the best post-fight brawl we've ever seen. Keep her eye on the corner, man. Just launches himself off the cage. It's awesome. <laughs> they do the old hockey, pull the, the hoodie over. You got some knees coming in here. You got it all, man. Well, the backstory is that they screwed him. Apparently, uh, they gave him an extension round after he already won, and then he loses in the extension round. So his corner's like, no, 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 no. This is not happening. All right, now we'll take you out here with our uh, final video of the week. Thanks to... Uh, Thanks to Cody for joining us. Thanks to Conor McGregor. Thanks to uh, everybody here at the Fight Network for all the work and setting up the Conor McGregor interview. Other than that, you're on your own. Oh,